horror movies and plot twists go together like Ross and Rachel from Friends. On paper, everyone loves them, but they're not always on the best terms. Forced metaphors aside, if there's one genre that really does love chucking a surprise or two your way, it's the world of scary movies. The intention of a horror movie is to frighten you, which is why many of them try to be as shocking and unpredictable as possible. This way, they can lure you into the story and keep you constantly guessing. One ubiquitous way of doing this is to trick the audience with a surprise villain, making you question everything you've seen so far and catching you off guard. Of course, the problem with this is that it's not always as tough to predict as the movie would like. So while there have been some stellar villain reveals, some classics include Orphan, Scream and Don't Look Now, there have been just as many that have landed flat on their faces as everyone saw them coming. There is, of course, a major spoiler alert on this list, but it's not like you won't see these twists coming a mile off anyway. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 horror movie villain twists we all saw coming. Number 10. Spiral from the Book of Saw, William Schenk the Saw series is something you either love or hate, and those who loved it were ecstatic when they found out a new movie was coming. Spiral promised a fresh plot, a different setting, and best of all, a brand new villain. But in the end, fans got a borderline average flick with a reveal so obvious it felt like a joke. During the film, you watch as Detective Zeke Banks and Detective William Schenk try to solve the mystery of a new killer who uses jigsaw-like traps. Unfortunately, the killer was very clearly Schenk. The first clue came from Saw's infamous love of twist endings, with surprise villains permeating the franchise. In Spiral, Schenk was the only character close enough to the protagonist to feel like a valid option. The movie tried to throw you off the scent by killing him off, but his fake-out death didn't feature a trap. Why would someone die in a Saw film off-screen when they could produce some good old-fashioned gore? Additionally, he talked about his family a lot, yet you never actually got to see them. Why would that be? Is it because they didn't exist? Uh, yeah, probably. To make matters worse, those are only a few reasons why this twist was obvious, as there were somehow even more. Number 9. April Fool's Day, Muffy A movie called April Fool's Day? Gee, I wonder if there's some sort of prank involved. You've got to give the movie some credit for being a hilarious subversion of the genre, but the title kind of gives this one away right off the bat. The film shows as a girl called Muffy invites some friends to stay with her in a remote mansion. But soon, things turn violent as they start to get picked off by an unknown assailant. Still, if you've read the title and gotten a vibe for the host of the party, then you won't be second-guessing for long. It's revealed that the whole thing was an April Fool's Day prank from Muffy and a test run for a staged horror resort. Viewers shouldn't be surprised as she's shown from the beginning to be an incurable prankster who constantly wanders off, leaving a ridiculous amount of suspicion on her shoulders. In the film's defence, it was released in 1986, so it likely did turn a fair few heads when it came out. But sadly, these near 40 years later, it's just another obvious horror satire. Number 8. Hide and Seek, Dr. David Calloway Horror movies tend to steer clear of big-name actors, as it's not the most decorated genre. This is why it's so exciting when an A-lister enters the fray, and in the case of Hide and Seek, it hit the absolute jackpot by landing the legendary Robert De Niro. But this was a double-edged sword, as it put a huge target on the character's back and made you wonder why would De Niro sign on to play a pretty average horror movie lead. Is it because there's something secretive going on that would propose a cool acting challenge for him? Say, playing the villain too? Yeah, that'd probably be it. Hide and Seek is a pretty forgettable horror thriller which shows as Dr. David Calloway moves to upstate New York with his daughter after the death of his wife. His kid soon makes a murderous imaginary friend named Charlie. It doesn't take long to figure out where this is heading, as De Niro's star power implies a tasty role and the early 2000s had an absolute obsession with mental conditions. So yes, Charlie and David Calloway are one and the same, as he has dissociative identity disorder. It's not hard to see coming. Number 7. Cutting Class, Brian Woods Cutting Class is a 1989 slasher flick known more for being one of Brad Pitt's first roles than anything of substance. Maybe the fact that it lured you in with a compelling whodunit only to reveal that your first guess was correct is why no one remembers it. Just a thought. 
The movie takes place in a school where a killer is wreaking havoc. The killer's identity is presented as a mystery with a few suspicious characters, none more so than Brian Woods, a young man recently released from an asylum after killing his father. You're quick to suspect him, as he's shown to be creepy and psychopathic. Still, you also think, well, surely he's too obvious, it's got to be a red herring. No, you were right, it was him. It was the kid who just got released and has a history of violence. What a surprise! The twist is so predictable it makes you wonder why you tried to make it a mystery in the first place. In the end, there was no shocking reveal, just the disappointment of being given the most obvious answer. Number 6. See No Evil, Margaret Let's move from one lacklustre slasher flick to another, only this time the infamous wrestling company WWE are involved, and they're bringing the iconic Kane, aka Glenn Jacobs, with them. Wow, this can only mean a modern classic horror movie, right? Right? See No Evil is a pretty paint-by-numbers slasher with nothing exceptional about it. Jacobs is fun as the monster Jacob Goodnight, and some of the kills are appropriately grotesque. However, everything still feels bona fide average, including the twist villain reveal. The setup of the movie features a group of juvenile delinquents being sent to clean up an abandoned hotel. There they meet the hotel's owner, Margaret, who seems increasingly disillusioned with them, and doesn't get all too concerned once they start dropping off like flies. Everyone is familiar with the trope of a slasher villain's weird relationship with their mother. It was a major staple of two of the best, Psycho and Friday the 13th. Thus, it was easy to suspect that Margaret not only had a hand in this, but was the person who brought the psycho killer into the world. Number 5. Saw 3D, Dr. Lawrence Gordon Saw, a franchise so nice it makes the list twice. When a film series' first instalment ends with a shocking villain reveal, you'd better believe it will have to keep that trend going. That's why the Saw films are full of more twists than an M. Night Shyamalan movie marathon. Still, while Spiral's reveal was obvious, this one was even worse. After the first Saw movie, one of the biggest lingering questions was what happened to Lawrence Gordon? He escaped the infamous room by sawing off his leg, but then faded into obscurity. Well, fans got their answers in the final movie, and it wasn't much of a shock. Saw 3D opened with a scene of Gordon cauterizing his wound after the events of the first film. His only appearances afterwards were in a group therapy meeting for trap survivors and the final reveal scene. Unfortunately, it was pretty damn evident from his appearance in the support group scene that he had villainy on his mind. He delivered a completely on-the-nose, ominous monologue, complete with a slow clap, heavy shadows, and a deliberately creepy performance from Carrie Elwes. Not to mention that Bobby got kidnapped directly after that scene. By the time the final reveal arrived, no one was surprised to learn that Gordon was a jigsaw apprentice. Number 4. Imprint, The Woman Imprint is far from a conventional movie by any stretch of the imagination. It started life as an episode of the anthology horror series Masters of Horror, but was deemed so sickening that it wasn't allowed to air, releasing on DVD instead. If you've seen it, then you'll know it's very deserving of that reputation. Still, although it's a great horror ride, it's no surprise when the leading lady performs a heel turn. The movie follows an American man who journeys to a Japanese brothel to rescue a sex worker he has fallen in love with. After failing to find her, he talks with a disfigured and nameless woman, who comforts him and talks of his loved one. However, it becomes quickly apparent that she's got a more villainous part to play in this story than he suspects. Part of what makes her so suspicious is how inconsistent her storytelling is. She constantly gives you information and then contradicts herself, making it clear that she's hiding something. The truth behind her past is repulsive and shocking, but the villainous reveal? Yeah, not so much. Number 3. Happy Death Day to You, Gregory Butler It's hard to make a slasher movie nowadays, as the genre is so wildly oversaturated, but the Happy Death Day series proves that there's life in the old gal yet. The first flick had fun with the concept of a time loop, and the sequel went even more overboard with sci-fi antics, including alternate realities, quantum reactors, and doppelgangers. Talk about upping the ante. However, one thing it certainly didn't improve upon was the surprise killer. The first film had a great reveal, with the person behind the babyface mask being a jealous student who happened to be having an affair with the same professor the lead was. So when it came to finding a new person to take the murder reins, the sequel went with an obvious connection to the past and had the killer be that very professor, Dr. Gregory Butler. 
This one wasn't a surprise at all. Gregory was the only logical option as he was the only character with any real motive for killing Tree and had a direct connection to the previous movie. Thus, his unveiling made viewers let out sighs of disappointment rather than gasps of revelation. Number 2. Last Night in Soho, Miss Collins, aka Sandy Last Night in Soho is a brilliant film from the mind of Edgar Wright and is already one of the less appreciated pieces in his filmography. It deserves a ton of credit, not only for being thrilling and creative, but for throwing a bunch of shocking twists and surprises your way. The only issue is that this last one was pretty obvious from the beginning. The movie follows a girl, Eloise, who moves to Soho and begins to have visions of a woman, Sandy, living in the 1960s. You watch as reality and her visions begin to blur, but there's one big mystery. Where is Sandy now? The film tries to make you believe she's dead, but there's one nagging suspicion that makes her fate way more apparent, in the form of Eloise's landlady. This landlady has two rather questionable notes. The first is that you never learn her first name, and the second is that she's played by Diana Rigg. Really? Diana Rigg happens to be in the movie as a landlady with no relevance to the plot? Who just so happens to be the exact right age for Sandy? Sure. When the truth came out that Sandy was alive and kicking, it didn't surprise many eagle-eyed viewers. Number 1. Scream, Richie Usually, figuring out the twist villain can be an incredibly annoying realisation that leads to disappointment. But in the case of the fifth Scream movie, it's actually a clever piece of meta-storytelling that, like the franchise wants to do, parodies and satires the genre. Yes, Richie was clearly one of the killers, but that's the point. The latest Scream instalment didn't switch the formula up much, giving you all the classic hallmarks of a Ghostface appearance, with violent attacks, connections to the people of Woodsboro, and of course, a surprise villain. Still, this one was so obvious that Dewey literally called it, pointing out that the killer is usually the love interest. You can tell quite early on that Richie is sporting the mask. Firstly, he's played by a profiled actor, which is undoubtedly suspicious. Additionally, so many clues are scattered throughout, such as his attempts to lure Mindy to the basement or the fact that Ghostface doesn't stab him, cutting him on the arm instead, plus, again, Dewey literally tells you. Of course, Richie wasn't acting alone, and the reveal of Amber as a killer was a little more hidden, so in the end, you got the best of both worlds. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.